Asalaamu As Alaikum. Welcome to another episode of Iftar and Ahl al Bayt TV with me, your host, the Svira Jessa. So lovely to have you back. Today, we're going to be making an Indian style potato salad. But it's actually a simple version of maybe a chaat. Mm, yeah, without all the chutney, so you don't have all the hassle of making all of that. So it's a simple version chaat. And alongside that, seeing that it's vegetarian today, a lot of our friends and viewers haven't had a chance to try some of the things because a lot of it has had meat in it. So this time we're going to make a kebab, but we're going to make a vegetarian kebab with beans. So it's still high in protein, but just something different. Now let's see if you can make this kebab and trick members of your family into believing it's a normal kebab. All right. So let's get our ingredients together and get started. For the Indian potato salad, I've got some new potatoes here. This is about one bag and I've just taken out the really tiny ones. I didn't use them. So all I've done is I've steamed the new potatoes. I've taken out the baby potatoes. I've taken out the really tiny ones and used the ones that were pretty similar in size. And remember to steam what we used in our dokras. So take the steaming basket, put it in a big pot, fill it with some water underneath and I've just put the potatoes on, covered it, and I've left it to boil for about 15 minutes, 15-20 um, minutes. So once they're boiled, sorry, once they're steamed, take them out, let them cool down so you can hold them, peel the skin off, and inside you can see I've just made small holes. So normally you could use a small melon scooper, but if you haven't got one, just be in inventive. So here, I've got a can opener and it's got a sharp point so that's what I've used and I've literally just scooped out some of the potato from inside and put the potato back together okay this potato you can just put some salt some chili powder and some lemon juice on top mix it up and it's a divine snack trust me so we can set that aside now for this we've made a hole which means we need a filling so to fill our potatoes, here I've got four tablespoons of desiccated coconut into which I have just poured on some hot water from the kettle. And most of the water you can see has been absorbed. So the extra water, you can just squeeze it out and drain it out. Now we have a nice dry mixture. So if you add in a little bit too much water, you can see what I've just done. So there's nothing going wrong in our mixture. We've got a nice wet mixture here to which we're going to add some finely chopped chilies. And again, as many as you like, it's to your taste. We're gonna add in the chilies. To the chilies, we're gonna add some chopped coriander. So now you can see why it's called an Indian potato salad. And for our spices, on the inside, we're gonna add some roasted cumin that's been powdered and we're going to add in about half a teaspoon into that we've got sugar so half a teaspoon of sugar and half a teaspoon of salt and we're just going to mix those items together just like that and that is our filling that's how easy it is to make Okay, once it's evenly mixed, then all we need to do is get our serving bowl. Now choose a serving bowl according to how many potatoes you're going to do. This four tablespoons of desiccated coconut is actually going to probably do all the potatoes, but just for now we're going to use some of them. So into our serving bowl, I've got one can of chickpeas. Remember, I said, you, I said to you this is... Um, very easy style chaat without really being a chaat so we've called it a potato salad but into the bottom we're going to put on a layer of the chickpeas and then all we're going to do is we're going to take our desiccated coconut mixture and fill in our holes just like that and we're going to put our potato back together and we're going to 
lay them into our serving dish. Okay, so all we do is pour in over the rest of the chickpeas and that's it. That's how simple that part is. Now, a chaat. A chaat always has a yogurt sauce. So, for our yogurt sauce, I've got some Greek yogurt here. And to the Greek yogurt, let's put this aside for a second. To the Greek yogurt, I've got some salt, teaspoon of salt, sugar, some black pepper, and I'm going to use, this is half, well, sorry, this is less than half a teaspoon of cumin powder. I'm going to use half of this, so a quarter teaspoon. So in goes the sugar. We want a nice sweetness. Remember, we've got green chilies on the inside of our potatoes. So we want this to be a little bit sweet and a little bit um, spicy. So in goes the freshly ground black pepper. And we're going to do a little bit, a quarter teaspoon of the cumin. Now, to thin our yogurt out, because it's Greek yogurt, it's nice and thick, I'm going to add a bit of milk. We'll add more if we need to. And using a whisk, just mix it all together. Now, you don't have to use as much pepper and cumin as I did. You can use just a little bit. Now, because it's Greek yogurt, it is very thick. So, adding a little bit more milk because it's really nice and thick. The taste will be lovely. And Greek yogurt, some of them have obviously extra protein. It's just, there's more protein in it. We don't want to use one of them, you know, the um, black and white yogurts or some of the cheaper yogurts that have more water content in them because we don't want the water to seep out in this dish. We want to still keep it nice and thick. All right, so now it's kind of like a runny yogurt. And this is great because it'll sit on top of our salad and all we have to do is pour the yogurt over the top just like that and we're covering all the lovely vegetables underneath with this yogurt now in a chaat when you make a chaat when you make a chaat you would then top this off with a green chutney and a tamarind chutney. So we're not going to put any chutneys on this. I'm going to give it a little bit of shake to smooth it out. And on top, I've got some chaat masala. I've got some roasted cumin powder. And I've got the Kashmiri red chili powder. You can use a hot spicy powder if you want it to be really nice and spicy. And all you're going to do with that is sprinkle the top like this. So a chaat can't be made without chaat masala. I think that's what makes all the difference. And I think when you're using it, you get kind of like, a, I'm not going to say an awful smell, but a strong smell. And sometimes people don't like that strong smell. But when it's sat here, when it comes to eating, it'll taste completely different. So don't be put off with that smell when you're actually sprinkling it on top. So on top, we're going to sprinkle a bit of the cumin powder. And our red chili powder will look lovely because it'll just set off on top of the other masalas, just like that. And that's how simple it is to make this potato salad. And then, just for garnish, we'll finish with some coriander leaves. Now, you can chop them up and sprinkle them over the top. That goes really nicely, so we can do that. We'll take a few leaves, roll them up just like this. Take your knife and very carefully just cut them into small strips and sprinkle them over the top like that. And this dish is done. So we'll put this aside to chill and we're going to now get our ingredients ready to make the bean vegetable kebab. So I'm going to say vegetable, but it's not really vegetable. 
it's a bean kebab. All right. So for our bean kebabs, I have two cans of kidney beans. So that's a star ingredient in our kebabs. I have also got five tablespoons of gram flour. Now this has been, I don't know if you remember once we used it and we put it in a frying pan and we just roast it on a low heat. Don't leave the gram flour in the pan because you can burn it quite easily. But as soon as it starts to, we're roasting the flour, so you'll, you'll, it releases an, um, a fragrance. And you can smell that in the air, you know that it's roasted, or it could change to a lighter color. The shade will change a little bit. Now we roast it so it doesn't actually become sticky in our mixture. We're gonna, we've got that in a large bowl because we're going to um, blend our beans in here just like that, and then we're gonna mix in the rest of our ingredients. So into our fruit processor goes two tins of chickpeas. We've drained, washed, and we're going to blend. Okay, you wanna keep scraping down. So I'm just gonna use the spatula, and I'm gonna scrape all of this down. We wanna blend it down until it's quite smooth. You might have to scrape it down a few times. And we want a nice puree of our beans. That's just about pureed. And as you can see here, I have some boiled potatoes left over. So this is about one medium sized potato. You don't need to add potatoes to this. I'm using it because I don't want it to go to waste. So I'm gonna add the potatoes straight in like that. And again, we're gonna pulse it and just let the potato, this will also help with the binding so we're going to pulse it and let the potato mix into the bean mixture. As soon as it disappears, you know that the mixture is ready. So let's mix it together a little bit more. There we go. That's all there is to it. So about five minutes of mixing and that puree is good enough. So let's add it into the bowl with our ground flour and then we'll add in the rest of our ingredients. Now we've got all our pureed mixture, our bean and that bit of potato that we had left over into our bowl. To that, we're gonna add in, I've got a tablespoonful of fried onion. This is just to give it that bit of crunch and the flavor that will come out of fried onion is really unique. So we're gonna crush it just like that and put that in. So they'll get little, you'll get little sort of snaps of the fried onion in your kebab as you're eating it. Okay, in goes all that fried onion. Now you could take one onion, just shout, just fry it a bit in oil or ghee and that's your fried onion, if you don't have any sort of ready prepared fried onion to go in. I've got two sprigs of mint leaves, which have been just chopped. Sprinkle that in there. And one finely chopped red onion. All of that goes straight in. We've got uh, coriander, because obviously kebab can't be made without coriander. So just a generous sprinkle of coriander and some green chilies. So finely sliced. 
a couple. It's up to you how many green chilies you'd like to put in, but maybe three or four because remember, the beans are very bland, so we're, we have to add the flavor in ourselves. Into that, we have um, garlic and ginger, so a good teaspoon, because there's no other flavor. So a teaspoon of garlic and a teaspoon of ginger, freshly grated. You can use whatever you use at home, but I feel there's a very a big difference when you use something that's freshly grated, the flavor that comes out. Here I've got salt, a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of garam masala, and a teaspoon of the red Kashmiri red chili powder. So it hasn't got too much of a kick, but it'll give it a nice color. All that goes in and oh, all of it goes in. And that's it. We're ready to mix our kebab together. Now I'm using a wooden spoon only because the mixture is quite sticky at this stage. So get it all in there together. I'm using almost like the back of the wooden spoon to mix all the ingredients, mash it in together. And if you have time, mix it together and leave it in the fridge for an hour. If you don't, you can still make it straight away, but the chilling does help the flavors blend together and it will help you when you're making your kebabs. It'll be a lot easier to form. So I've already started rolling the kebabs and let me just show you. So I've wet my fingers and you don't have to wet your hand, just the end of your fingers. Take a walnut size ball of mixture and then just in your fingers, press it into an oval shape. Now, if you like round ones, obviously you can do round ones, but you don't want to make them too thin. There we go. And you can also see that I've put in a little bit of oil into this frying pan. So it's heating up nicely and it's almost like a, sh a very, very shallow fry. If you don't want to have that much oil, you can just use um, a brush like we use for egg washing and just brush the bottom of your frying pan with a bit of oil. And as soon as you're ready, the kebabs go in just like that. So if you'd like to make them a bit bigger, obviously you can. Nothing says you can't. So we're just going to shallow fry them. As soon as they brown, we'll turn them over. Okay, so they're starting to go nice and brown. And as they do, I'm just going to turn them over and I've got a plate here with a paper towel in it to soak up the extra amount of oil. So just be gentle with them. You might need a small spatula or even a fork, but just be gentle with them. Now it's made a nice crust on one side and we want the same to happen on the other side. That looks lovely. So we can get another one in the middle. And as soon as I finish frying them off, we'll be ready to serve. Make sure you make them nice and golden because you don't want the softness of our bean mixture to come through. So that's still quite light, nice and brown and nobody's gonna guess that these kebabs aren't made from meat. It's almost like a, a vegetarian or a vegan style shami kebab, if you wanna think of it like that. So I'm gonna check the other side and you can see it's still a bit light. I still want it to be a little bit darker. So make sure you're also regulating your heat the whole time because there's just a little bit of oil. 
the temperature can go high and low very easily when you're turning it up or down. So just be careful. So we'll drain it a little bit on the side. And straight onto our paper towel so it can soak up some of that extra oil. There's no reason why you can't spray them with oil and then bake them in the oven either on a higher heat though, not too low. And then flip them over and again spray them with oil and bake the other side. Alhamdulillah, look what we've achieved today. We've made an Indian potato salad, which is a cheat on our chat. And we've made some bean kebabs, which by the looks of it, doesn't look any different to a meat kebab. So the proof is in the pudding. Have a go and see what you think when you bite into it. Can you disguise it on the table and let everyone think that it is a meat kebab? See what you think. Let me know if you managed to trick anyone in your family or your friends into thinking they were eating a nice juicy meat kebab. You can serve this as we have, or you could have it in pita bread or in burrata with some cucumber and feta cheese. There's lots of things you can do with it. I'm going to leave you to let me know and share some of the ideas of how you presented your kebabs. I've really enjoyed cooking with you today. I look forward to, we're coming to the end almost, so I'm looking forward to the last few shows with you. And inshallah, we'll be able to cook more lovely things to share with the people that we love. Take care, be well, and love. Spread your love around. Ma salama. Thank you.